One of the very first films involving portals that I remember was Stargate. When I first saw this movie when I was in my youth, I was in awe that they could come to a Stargate and travel to another realm, to another world, to another dimension. And fast forward to 2022 and we have scientists that in the name of science are about to once again fire up CERN. On June 16, 2016, CERN, C-E-R-N, the European Organization for Nuclear Research in Geneva, started a project to accelerate charged particles. Ten days later, photographer Christophe Suarez posted a series of photographs of the skies above CERN. Those jaw-dropping photos showed the formation of strange clouds and were proof that the biggest experiment in the world is about to tear a portal into another universe open. Up until now, we've only seen such incidents in the movies. But now, after witnessing it in reality, people are not only concerned but scared if the scientists have actually found a way to open a portal to another world. Uh, what's going to happen next? Are we going to be destroyed or meet ourselves in another dimension? But. What really is of everyone's concern is the comeback of CERN. Yeah, after three years of long shutdown, we are all very, very uh, keen on, on getting the accelerator running again. Of course, this comes with a, a certain sense of, of, of tension, nervousness. Uh, is everything going well? And, and, and uh, will it all work as we, as we expect? There are always risks uh, when you warm up and cool down a machine from room temperature down to minus 270 degrees because materials shrink, etc. Et Did all this go right? And this will only know in the end if the beam goes around. So that's a very, very exciting moment. Some would say that it's just a simple science experiment. But if you hear the words of their founder, of what he thinks that CERN is capable of doing, you quickly realize that there is much more to this than simply a science experiment. Lian Tao Wang, a quote attributed to him, says, we know for sure that there is a dark world and there's more energy in it than there is in ours. You'll notice that with CERN, they're always speaking of dark matter. He added that the particles that the collider catches could, coupled to the Higgs boson in some form or fashion, making the Higgs boson a portal to the dark world. My friends, that is not science. My friends, that there is demonic. In Revelation 9, read the whole thing. But it speaks of a day that is coming when the bottomless pit is going to be opened. And all sorts of beings that are coming from other dimensions are going to be released. In Revelation 9, 2 and on forward, it talks about the bottomless pit. And many have wondered, CERN and the bottomless pit, what is the connection? I don't think people understand that when the bottomless pit is open, all sorts of demonic entities that are from other dimensions, once the bottomless pit is open. If you read Jude 6, if you read 2 Peter 2, 4, you can understand that in the bottomless pit, which some would even say is Tartarus, some of the most wicked fallen angels are there. The ones who kept not their first state and were fallen angels. When this place is opened, I don't think this world understands what they're tapping into in 2022. The idea of a portal is not new. If you look at Stonehenge as an example, Stonehenge is located precisely on a very highly active laid line configuration. Mullumbimby, New South Wales, 1939. Frederick Slater, the president of the Australian Archaeology Society was dispatched to investigate the discovery of a complex aboriginal arrangement consisting 
of 188 standing stones. Slater dubbed the formation the Stonehenge of Australia and became convinced that it was one of the oldest temple complexes in the world, predating those found in Europe and the Middle East. Natural energy lines. Running around the globe, everywhere, are energies that pulsate through the Earth. This particular place is on, we call it, a power spot, where energies seem to accumulate, come into like a hub, and then flow off into other places. So if, is this the same what they call ley lines? Is that the the same ley thing? lines and ley energy all come into it. We've got an energy line running through here that starts in the Isle of Wight, goes through Chichester Cathedral, yeah. goes through the Uffingham White Horse, right. comes through here. Well, I like to think I'm open-minded, but an ancient energy superhighway feels a bit of a stretch. So you're standing here, I know you're concentrating on talking to me, but are you feeling the energy? Not at the moment, because it's no. too bloody cold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Around these stones here is a band of energy. Would you like to try and find this? Yes, but I doubt I'm going to be as good as well, you are. Well, I don't suppose you will be, because I've been doing this for donkey's <laughs> years. All right. So take two of those rods. Yes, OK. Is With there's... these two metal rods, using the medieval technique of dousing, Ron tells me I should be able to detect the spiritual powers running around the stones. I'm throwing you in at the deep end here. You've yeah. never done this before, so, no, no. so just walk forward, tune into yeah. this energy yeah. that's coming from the stones and ask for your rods... Just there, and there we go. Yeah. Now, are you doing that, or has that done it by itself? It's done it by itself. There we are. Now that that's done, now just walk out slowly now, just to show that something is happening through your rods or through you. Because yeah, this is no, happening the, through you. This is extraordinary. I've, uh, I've Again, discovered a new power that I didn't know I had. Is so it a we, power? We, is it a sensitivity? As far as I'm concerned, 80% of the population can do this if they're yeah. interested. Oh, and there's me thinking I'm special. When you listen to historians in our modern day, they always tell you that if you go to the past, you see individuals that were Neanderthals, you see individuals that were uneducated, you see individuals who were lacking understanding. But the more and more you go looking backwards, the more you start seeing structures that it, that it baffles you that a human alone could have built. You start seeing structures in different parts of the world located on the same ley lines with geographical configurations that just blow your mind, all in the name of creating portals. But I tell you today to be very careful with these portals because Ephesians 6.12 tells you a little bit of a glimpse of what you find in these portals. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. As you look at films like Interstellar, where there's a tesseract, where there's a monolith, where there's a portal, where beings from another world interfere with humanity to take us to the next level of evolution. And it's always this story where the good aliens come to protect you from the bad aliens. Don't you notice that theme? Even in Transformers, Revenge of the Fallen. It's a, a good alien versus a bad alien. It's a perversion of what the scriptures warn you about, where you have fallen angels, the evil aliens, and then you have God's army, right? which they would say the good aliens. It's a perversion of anything and everything that you know to confuse the spiritual realm and get you to lower your guard and your defense mechanism against what's really happening out there because what people are experimenting with in these dimensions is diabolical. I'm gonna play a short clip from a documentary that, that I made and I'll return back to this video. Once this video is over, I want you to see that whole documentary. I spoke about how they're using quantum computing on actually tapping into the fourth dimension and parallel universes in their mind so that they can pull something out of the parallel universe and bring it into our world and improve humanity. It sounds so familiar from the founder of CERN, doesn't it? Sounds very familiar because these individuals have the same goal, the same tactics. I'll let you hear it for yourself. These are from our lab in Burnaby in British Columbia. From the outside, they look like giant black monoliths. 
So if you're sta you have the opportunity to stand next to one of these machines, it is an awe-inspiring thing, at least for me. It feels like an altar to an alien god. It, they really are impressive machines. At the heart of this big box is a tiny chip about the size of your thumbnail. And on this chip resides all of the wonder and magic that makes this thing go. In a quantum computer, that device can be in this strange situation where these two parallel universes have a nexus, a point in space where they overlap. And when you increase the number of these devices, you, every time you add one of these qubits, you double the number of these parallel universes that you have access to until such time when you get to a chip like this, which is about 500 of these bits, you have something like two to the 500th power of these guys living in that chip. So the way I think about it is that the shadows of these parallel worlds overlap with ours. And if we're smart enough, we can dive into them and grab their resources and pull them back into ours to make an effect in our world. Now this may sound very odd to you and bizarre, and in fact I am using language that a normal theoretical physicist probably wouldn't use, but this is what I'm telling you is absolutely correct and in line with the way that these things actually Portals work. are everywhere. A lot of these musicians, when they're standing on stage, some of these stages are in the forms of portals. Your children are bombarded with portals. Because that's what CERN is. It's a portal for grown scientists, but your children are experimenting with it as well. Lego Dimensions. Have you ever heard of Lego Dimensions? Where they can build a portal in their bedroom and they can take a little character, put it on the portal and it transfers them into a different realm and universe. Granted, all of that was preparation for the metaverse and all of the things that are coming. But isn't it amazing the indoctrination with Disney Infinity? The same thing. A portal that you can walk into and it takes you to a different universe where you interact with different entities, where you interact with different planets and you interact with different worlds. I think people have forgotten that Satan comes as an angel of light. Satan is not going to come to scientists and tell them and reveal to them who he is in nature. He's not going to come to world entities and reveal to them who he is and what he does and how he deceives and how he attacks. It's been a slow indoctrination for these governmental agencies and it's been a slow indoctrination for your children in your home. Films like Harry Potter where they can walk into a portal that's built on a train station and end up in a different dimension in a different world. Where they can build portals on command essentially and travel to different destinations. Current TV shows like Night Sky on Amazon, they have a portal in their backyard. And as you watch the series, you'll find out that there are different portals in different parts of the world located in specific locations. Sounds very similar to Stonehenge, doesn't it? Where people believe that they have a portal where they can interact with entities that are unseen. And yet they don't believe in the Bible? Funny how they'll tell you they don't believe in the scriptures. Yet what they're doing is everything that the scriptures is describing in Ephesians 6.12. They're tapping into the demonic in the name of science in the name of fun, in the name of entertainment. When you look at Joe Rogan as an example, when he taps into the DMT, and we'll deal with that in another video, but when they use these recreational drugs, they're doing it as a religious experience. And when Joe Rogan enters the DMT realm, he's even said it himself, it's changed his life entirely because now he's at a point that aliens can land in front of his house he wouldn't be impressed because he's seen something in another dimension. DMT. That is DMT. Wow, if, that is hardcore DMT. Hardcore DMT. When you do DMT, you see that. And you see that in a way where it's so much more spectacular than any anything you ever yeah. see is under normal consciousness. Is your body there? Like, are you it's like... It's not a body no. thing. You're not thinking of but your body. But you're your yourself. Eyes are closed. I mean, I'm yeah. myself. Yeah, you're yourself. Like, you look around. You're yourself, it's, Dude, if you open your eyes... Vulnerable. Here's what's crazy. because So if you close your eyes, it's like they're open somewhere else. 
And then when you open your eyes, you see Look reality overlaid over this. Tell me this really? one didn't influence the Egyptians. Click on the one your cursor's on. No, Jane. I. Tell me that didn't influence the Egyptians. What this painting or the? No, that this this these kind of trip to well, did they um, have that, images. Did they have DMT? One hundred percent. Yeah, there was one of the things that John Anthony West did was yeah. uh, he was going over <clears throat> the That's Temple in Man. Yeah. The Temple in Man is one of the structures. It's in um, in uh, Egypt. Mm -hmm. And it, it shows different parts of it are supposed to represent different corridors of the body, like different chakras of the body. Uh -huh. And that there was some evidence that the eye of Horus is really the pineal gland. To Joe Rogan, DMT is a portal. And the entities that they see in that portal, some of them are called machine elves. They see fairies. They see jesters. They see serpents. They see fallen angels. They see all sorts of entities. And yet they believe in that. But they can't believe in Jesus. But they can't believe in Jesus. Family, there is another dimension. There is. Examples of it are in scripture. Tons of them. Of Jesus defying that fourth dimension. Because he is God. Second, King, Second Kings 2.11 is an example of something that happened involving what we know as the fourth dimension. And it came to pass as they still went on and talked that, Behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. That's in scripture. Okay. He was able to ascend to a different dimension. He was taken up. So the perversion of the godly is the demonic, where Satan is getting people to tap into portals to interact with him. In 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 52, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised up incorruptible, and we shall be changed. In a twinkling of an eye, done, completed. An act of a different dimension. In Acts 8, 39 through 40. And then, and when they were come up out of the water, and the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip. Took him. Boom. And the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus. And passing through, he preached in all the city till he came to Caesarea. Just transported from one place to the next, taken up like nothing. The idea of a portal, the idea of a dimension, the idea of the fact that you can be in a position and God can simply defy any of the logic that you and I know in this world and take us to another dimension that is in scripture full of them. And Satan being the slanderer that he is, he is going to take anything and everything that he sees that God does. He's going to mock it. He's going to counterfeit it. And there are people that are interacting through these portals with beings that they consider gods. Joe Rogan consider, considers many of these beings, and we'll deal with that in another video, entities. They literally call them entities. You understand this, right? These scientists that run CERN, these quantum computing inventors that are telling you that they want to tap into these realms and pull knowledge. And they want to pull this so that humanity can essentially evolve into the next stage. The devil is a liar and the devil is a deceiver. And today I want to remind you not to be that impressed with these portals because they're nothing new under the sun. Nimrod's tower was essentially a portal, an act of rebellion against God. Where did Nimrod's tower go? Is it not defeated? Yes, it is. Satan knows how to interact with people. To a witch, her portal is a Ouija board. Or to a witch, her portal is a ritual. Same thing. Whatever act she does that dedicates it to Satan, demonic entities will appear. To Joe Rogan, his portal is DMT. When he does what he does, he sees what he sees and it's pretty demonic. To the scientists, his portal is CERN. 
where the devil will communicate with him in the language that he wants to hear. The language is, we are some alien entities that come from another realm to help you evolve and to save you from an alien threat that is coming soon to Earth. You may laugh, you may scoff, you may think that I'm crazy, and that's okay. But I am not the one telling you this. These are scientists that are telling you this. But the church is still asleep, and the church does not understand that there are wicked things out there that you don't want to mess with, that you do not want to mess with, yet you are. And as you are, and as one day that bottomless pit is open, things are going to get real interesting. But through this all, I remind you again, just as witchcraft is defeated in the name of Jesus Christ, there's no Ouija board, there's no witchcraft, there's no spell, there's nothing that a witch can do to you that you cannot cast out in the name of Jesus. The same with any of these entities, with the same with any of these portals, the same with any of these attacks. You stand firm in the word of Jesus Christ, you believe what Jesus Christ said about what he said, and you let God be true, and every man a liar. All of this is the imitation of the real thing. Think about that. All of this is, this is like the Dollar Tree version of anything that God has in store for you. This is the imitation. This is not the real thing. And this imitation act that Satan is parading around right now is defeated. In Jesus' name. Would you mind praying with me before you leave? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for all that you have done for our lives. You are an awesome, awesome God. You are an awesome, awesome God that defies all things. This world is still trying to understand that fourth dimension. This world is still trying to understand how in the book of Revelation, you described a perfect tesseract in the New Jerusalem. They can't, these are things that baffles, baffles humanity. How in your word of God, you proclaimed all of the things that were to come, how they would come, and what the end result would be. And the end result is that we win. In Jesus' name. Today, if you're feeling defeated. Today, if you're feeling heavy. You're feeling a spirit of heaviness in your life. Today, if you stumbled across this video and you're finding yourself that you simply are just tired. You know, you've gone, you've, you've gone long enough. You've done all the things that you wanted to do, but you just feel exhausted. I have good news for you today. And that good news is that Jesus Christ has already conquered for you. And that God has special plans for you, he says. And the word of God says that he withholds no good thing from you. So don't stress yourself out too much if you haven't achieved what you want to achieve. Don't stress yourself out too much if things aren't working out according to your plans. Because if you seek the kingdom of God, you can trust and understand that God withholds no good thing from you. He knows what's best for you. He knows what's best for you. Wait, have patience, and believe that the God that you serve has not forgotten about your family. That the God that you serve has not forgotten about your trials. That the God that you serve has not forgotten about your anxiety. He has not forgotten about your depression. He has not forgotten about your wife and your husband. He has not forgotten. Seek him today. Let him heal you today. In Jesus' mighty name. In the name of Jesus, amen. Um, may God bless you guys. Thank you for passing by. If you would be so kind to share this content, um, not only this channel, but any other channel that you interact with, um, a lot of these videos, they are in essence, quote unquote, shadow banned. Once they're uploaded, they don't appear in people's subscriptions. They don't, you know, it's how, it, the only, the only reason that people view these is because they remind bird to actually pass by and see them. So if you can take a few seconds, I would appreciate that. Also, if you can, can you please do me a favor as you get time, um, throughout the week, test out the website, um, there's a couple of issues happening with the website that we're working on. If you can just test it out and go to the video tab and let me know if the videos are actually playing on there. That would be really helpful. Thank you very, very much. And God bless you. I'm going to leave you with a couple of videos here for you to check out. Um, these videos are documentaries that I've talked about this very same topic. And um, thank you for the support that you do for the ministry. Thank you for supporting us. Um, I appreciate it more than you could imagine. And um, just wanted to say thank you for all that you do. God bless you always, okay? Be encouraged and remember that Jesus Christ, he is awesome, all right? And soon we have some news coming on an app that is in development. Um, it'll, it's going to be pretty cool, all right? God bless you very much. Thanks for all that you do.